Hello and welcome to another lottery video with me Barfelian and today we're going to be discussing the huge elephant in the room or should that be Mumikil um, which is that Turbine Games are going to relinquish control of both the Lord of the Rings Online aka Lotro and Dungeons and Dragons Online aka DDO um, and they're going to be passing ownership to a brand new company called Standing Stone Games which is going to be formed uh, pretty much from former employees of Turbine who are going to move to this new company um, and this new company is going to take over ownership of both titles uh, going forwards and Turbine are not going to have anything to do with these games going forwards. I don't think there was any kind of murmurings too far before Christmas um, but things kind of like escalated pretty quickly and they just kind of like came out and said hey you know this is happening. Surprise. Um, so this video is basically we're going to talk about what has happened because the transition has gone very quickly it happened literally just before the start of the new year uh how we kind of like approached that over the past year the things that were kind of like moving us towards this happening and basically looking towards the future what does this mean for for the lord of the rings online specifically because uh, i don't know much about dungeons and dragons online um and kind of like predicting you know is this for the best is it for the worst and kind of like talking about some of the bits and pieces that's kind of happened along the way um, so to start with then if we have a look at the article that they published um, on the Lord of the Rings on one website and I think there's one on the Dungeons and Dragons uh, website as well let's just zoom in this so this is their statement just saying you know what is happening um, which doesn't go into a massive amount of detail they have done a FAQ as well and I've got various other bits and pieces I'm going to talk about throughout this video anyway so just to read this out then so today we have momentous news the game teams responsible for the Lord of the Rings Online aka Lotro and Dungeons and Dragons Online DDO are now moving from Turbine to Standing Stone Games a newly formed indie game studio so it's a brand new company in addition, we have partnered with Daybreak Games to provide global publishing services. They've had a long successful history developing and publishing MMOs and we're happy to lean on their expertise. So the first question you probably ask is, who are these companies? Why are they taking control of my games? So Standing Stone Games is a brand new company that they have formed to take ownership of both of those products. Um, the other thing to bear in mind as well is that prior to this transition, Turbine has been running three MMOs, so The Lord of the Rings Online, Dungeons and Dragons Online, and the third one is Asheron's Call, which is being retired, I do believe, it's the last day in January 2017. Um, so after that the servers are shutting down, so that one has not transitioned to Standing Stone Games, that will, that will shut down at the end of this month, because we're in January now, um, while the other two games have transitioned to this new company. Now, the interesting thing to note from that is they have said newly formed indie game studio. I, it implies that they have nothing to do with Warner Brothers, which to me is interesting because in order to have splintered off into a separate company, um, I, I don't know about the legal implications of this, but certainly Warner Brothers holds a lot of the rights to a lot of the... Uh, Lord of the Rings type um, uh, intellectual property so how they can splinter off that easy I don't know I don't know if there's any problems with Middle Earth Enterprises and the Salzentz company for again some of the Lord of the Rings um, property rights as well to transition that to a whole new company uh, whether it is truly independent I don't know it doesn't sound like it's a subsidiary of, of Warner Brothers at least um, but they're, they're setting up a brand new uh, company, which if you go to their website, there's there's really not much on there. It's literally just saying, you know, these are our games, come play with us. And the only thing they've got is just a little bit of blurb down the bottom here, which says that they are going to be based in Boston, Massachusetts, which for those of you who don't know is literally where the turbine offices are. I don't know if they're keeping the same building as that they used to work in as turbine. It's a bit shady um, but the interesting thing is as, as the article will, will go on to tell us 
that it's going to be a lot of the same people who were working at Turbine are now part of this. So it seems like there's been a massive uh, outflow of, of the, the staff as well, which is a bit interesting. So, so carrying on with this then. So with the announcement out of the way, I wanted to, to talk to you about what this all means. We are embarking on an exciting adventure as Standing Stone Games, a newly independent studio staffed by people who have been working on DDO and Lotro for many years. The teams remain very much committed to both games and are thrilled to continue the development and operations of these games as an independent studio. So again, the use of the word independent, this implies Warner Brothers is not involved. This is an opportunity for us to bring about our dreams while still working on two of the biggest licenses in video games. It's a huge honour and for you this means your games will continue to grow and improve. So the key point here, that this is not going into maintenance mode, they have plans to continue on with development um, and, and bring new content to both games. We love to focus on games with a high level of depth and scope and we can't wait to show you what the future brings. So again, this implies they have some big plans for the future. So carrying on then, although a great many exciting things are happening on our end, you'll be able to continue playing the games you enjoy with as little interruption as possible. Our development continues on track and the plans we have already announced remain firmly in our future view. Again, although we are a new studio, we are also the same developers who have been and will continue to work on our games. So this is uh, certainly suggesting that a lot of the staff who used to work at Turbine on both games have now moved to this new company, which I find very interesting because it's not just, you know, you're selling off the IP to allegedly a wholly independent company, which you would have to imagine there's there's going to be a fee involved. They're not gonna, Turbine aren't just going to sell off um, the Lord of the Rings on a free, you know, take ownership of this, we don't want it anymore. It's going to cost a bit. And this is a brand new company and they're going to have to get that money from somewhere. But then, on top of that, if a lot of the staff are leaving Turbine and going to this new company as well, again, that's kind of a bit weird. Um, because if it's a completely independent studio, would they take ownership of those contracts? It's not It's not a buyout of Standing Stone Games buying out Turbine as a company. Turbine as a company still continues to exist after this transition, um, but they're going to be focusing on uh, mobile uh, applications rather than MMOs in the future. What prompted that change, I don't know. Um, but it's interesting that they're migrating a lot of the staff as well. Um, I just find it's very strange, um, both in a, in a logistical and legal sense of the way. Um, so the last bit of this then is, our success has always been possible because of your support. As we move forward, this is more important than ever. The ultimate goal of our new studio is to continue to bring you amazing experiences. We are excited for the future, and we're thrilled to have you with us on this journey. Here's to great games, epic adventures, and memorable times with friends. So this was posted a um, little bit before Christmas. Um, just kind of like dropping the bomb on everyone that this was going to happen. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting, and understandably it's kind of got everyone reacting with a bit of trepidation, you know. Is, is Lotto going into to maintenance mode? Do they have plans for the future? Is this perhaps something related to the, the license allegedly expiring and, and things like that? Because people have been worried for some time that, you know, as far as they're aware, outside of, of Turbine, um, that the license was going to expire in 2017. And was that going to involve the servers shutting down or were they going to extend the license? Was it financially viable for them to extend the license? And, and questions like this. Um, so, so this has kind of got everyone cautiously um, wondering whether you know this this transition is going to be for the best or the worst. And certainly for those of us who um, have been playing Lottery for some time um, on the European servers, um, originally when when Lottery launched, the European operation 
was outsourced to a UK company called Codemasters, and they basically ran the, the logistics, the accounts, etc., uh, for the European player base. And then um, back in 2011, I believe it was, um, Turbine decided to to no longer outsource it to Codemasters. I can't remember what the exact reason was. Um, whether they just didn't want to extend their license to Codemasters or whether Codemasters didn't want to to continue running this operation. So uh, Turbine took control back from Codemasters, physically took the servers, relocated them from, I think it was Amsterdam back back then, um, and moved the servers back across to Boston in, in the United States. So as a European player, you know, this isn't the first time this has happened, but the... Uh, the servers themselves, you know, they're, they're staying exactly where they are, no change, they're in the same data center, etc. So there's going to be no um, interruption to, to the game like there was last time or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it's interesting times, shall we say. But I've got various other little bits of interviews and stuff which might provide some context as well to, to what's going on here. Um, so yeah, we, we've seen. They, uh, Standing Stone Games don't really have much to go on at the minute. They're, they've just got like a little placeholder website up at the moment. Um, but Daybreak Games, so this is the this is the people who are going to be like the publisher for the game. Um, now I'm not going to go through their massive Wikipedia page, but Daybreak Game Company was formerly Sony Online Entertainment, who obviously have been around for quite some time. Um, specifically between 98 and 2015, they were called Sony Online Entertainment. So they have been around a while. We would assume they know what they're doing. Um, but this is just, um, as a publisher role, they aren't going to be the, the developers for this. Um, but if we, if we scroll down, uh, and I'll put up these links to all these articles that I'm uh, referencing in the description below the video. Um, but you'll see they have quite a long list of, of games that they've kind of had oversight of. Um, I'll be honest, none of them particularly leave me, you know, amazed. I mean, some of you guys, you know, might find some of these games a bit more interesting than others. I mean, they have got, like, EverQuest and that. Um, rather worryingly, though, somewhere in this list, that, you know, they had the, uh, the Matrix online, and we know how long that one lasted. Um, but, yeah, so... But these guys aren't, aren't the developers. It's going to be the same devs we've always had uh, working on this. Um, and, you know, this came as a, as, a, as a massive surprise when it originally happened. Um... You know, like all of the, uh, oh, it's crashed. <laughs> Let's see if we can refresh it. Ah, oh, it's going to be nasty. Okay, open up a new tab. It's crashed before I started recording as well. So you know, all the press uh, within the industry was talking about you know this this sudden transition and that, um, and all of them have, have kind of unanimously said you know what exactly precipitated the change is unknown at this point. Uh, but a Standing Stone rep confirmed that Turbine is no longer involved with either game. However, the leadership and game development teams are the same groups from Turbine that have been working on Lotro and DDO. So whether it's entirely the existing Turbine staff, I don't know. Um, or whether only some of the Turbine staff joined Standing Stone Games. I don't think there's been an official statement on this. Um, so they're the same groups from Turbine that have been working on Lotro and DDO and they are moving to Standing Stone Games. The teams remain very much committed to both of these games and are continued to uh, and are thrilled to continue development and operations of these games as an independent studio. And it goes on to say about Asheron's calls being retired uh, yeah, on the 31st of January 2017. Um, so, let's look back then across last year, 2016, in the run-up to this transition actually occurring. Um, so, if we go back to around about July time, uh, according to this article, so at this point, um, Rick Heaton, aka Sapiens, who has been the long-time uh, community manager for Lotro, um, ended up leaving Turbine, and it sounded like you know he he was uh, made redundant, as were a lot of staff, um, as happened in many times over the years where Turbine has kind of laid off various staff for whatever reasons. Um, I can't really speculate. Um, whether it's financially they, they can't support the staff or whatever but they did a round of layoffs and he was one of the casualties as well and back in July you know he's, he's posted you know on his Twitter account thoughts with Turbine, DDO and Lotro peeps today blah 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 
Um, and then people are like, oh my god, is, is Turbine closing? And it's like, no, that there's layoffs. Um, so this started happening way back in July. Now, around about the same time, there was also some kind of hints that they were planning to transition from a normal game developer, so doing things like MMOs like they had been doing. Um, they did briefly have another game which was um, Infinite Crisis I believe it was called, so it was like a, a MOBA multiplayer online battle arena type game set within the, the DC universe um, and that kind of bombed a bit, um, so whether that affected Turbine financially, who knows um, but I think it's something that, that Warner Brothers kind of like forced upon them to you know go off and develop this um, but round about the summertime, Turbine decided it wanted to transition from, from working on normal games to working on like phone apps and, and games for your, for your phones. Um, so it sounded like this kind of like begun that round of layoffs. Um, so the next interesting thing that I've got is some interviews, um, which were in August, the very end of August 2016. Um, this is a guy uh, called uh, Daddy from Daddy's Lotro Guides. Uh, he interviewed a large number of uh, people throughout Turbine, so the executive producer, the new community manager Cordovan, um, and then various other people as well. And th these are fantastic interviews, so I, I do recommend that you guys have a look at these as well. Um, but they're, they're points that I want to draw attention to. Uh, first off is, is question three here. So we've seen a lot of cuts being made by Warner Brothers. Uh, and by the way, that's not unusual for a video game of this age, but there is a licensing agreement that will be expiring in 2017. This is public knowledge. Is there anything you may be able to say as the new executive producer to quiet some of the doomsayers? There's an awful lot of negativity on the forums and other internet media about the future of Lotro. So bear in mind, there was no hint of the transition at this point. Is there anything that you could share to allay the fear that Lotro is coming to an end next year? Now, this is this is the, the really big bit. The executive producer then responds with, sure, right now we have a two and a half year plan, which therefore takes them to the end of 2018, because we're halfway through 2016 at this point. So they have a long term plan. Um, and you've got to assume as well, by this time, if they were thinking about uh, splintering off the company to, to a new independent studio, they probably would have been giving it a few months for. It's not going to suddenly happen overnight. The, the, all the legal implications alone you know, are going to slow everything down by a few months. So they must have had some kind of inkling at this point um, that the transition was going to happen. And they already have a plan to at least the end of 2018, which by extension means they must have a plan to be licensed to continue this property till at least the end of 2018 and they go on to say you know the only reason it's not further is because we want to see where the players heads are after that much time so you know two years down the line you know the player numbers could drop off or they'll move on to other games or whatever and it might not be financially viable or they might want to move on to other things themselves and discontinue uh, support who knows um, but they go on to say you know we're focused not only on telling the epic story leading up to the black gate but also what happens beyond. And they have said before, you know, even once the ring is destroyed, that's not going to be the end of the story. There's plenty of other, you know, evil people that need to be cleaned up around Middle Earth. There's going to be a lot of cleaning up and, you know, putting everything right that went wrong and got destroyed in the War of the Ring. So they've always had plans to go beyond the ring being destroyed anyway. Um, but the, the other big thing that, that kind of largely went underneath the radar really, there wasn't much fuss made about this, is that the executive producer then goes on to say we have already kind of hinted to the players that an expansion is on the way and I don't think this is probably the first time they, they've hinted that this is going to happen but this is significant so first off they haven't done an expansion since Helm's Deep, since then they've kind of been doing like large content updates rather than like proper traditional expansions um, so the fact that they are planning to do another expansion is quite significant, um, especially since it seems like they have a smaller team these days than when they did Helm's Deep, or indeed any of the previous expansions. Um, 
so it's it's quite interesting that they decided to do that. And at this point, we, where we've got in the story, we've we've been basically working our way up to the back gate. It's a case of what is that expansion going to be? And it seems like it would be something Mordor related at this point because we've kind of like exhausted everything um, on the road to Mordor for the main Lord of the Rings story itself. Unless it's going to be something kind of off to the side, being its own kind of story, which ever since Merkwood they've kind of said no you know we're focused on telling the actual Lord of the Rings story now no more diversions and side quests um, he goes on to say I do not want to talk too much about the expansion because we are still far enough away that plans may change and ultimately we do not want to disappoint the community so my guess is that they're probably assuming this transition has not delayed things they're probably going to look to do an expansion release mid to late 2017 so you probably see something coming out around about August to October later this year we'll see um, but they, they have long term plans um, you know they say it's, it's not that they don't have long term plans they just don't want to talk about things so long in advance um, and th but they want the experience of entering Mordor to be really epic because it's something other than the two halflings something we did not see much of um, and they go on and talk about this more and more in detail um, in the in the following questions and that, uh, and the other thing as well is that they do go and talk about you know server lag and performance, and they go on and say you know it's it's not one thing it's like a hundred headed hydra I think they use as the the uh, analogy, um, but there are various issues that they want to um, to address, um, but they have to divert. Here we go. This is the crap I'm looking for. Um, when you see large bosses and people who are looking at their buffs, there seems to be some sort of bottleneck there, and we are looking to bring in extra engineering resources to look at that specifically. So they want to divert some some you know developer and tech support to, to actually look into these issues, um, which is key because obviously if they were planning on on not really caring or going into maintenance mode, they wouldn't be doing this. Um, so. You know they they do have the intention to continue the the development of that so that that is good. Um, then on the part two of the same interview, so this is still the end of August. Um, they get a question where where they get interviewed to say you know speaking of the future, the new raid that we got, um, Throne of the Dread Terror is quite nice. It's got people pugging a lot. What's the future of this going to be in Lotter? You know, is there going to be another raid planned at some point? Is it something we'd see in, in late 2017, early 18? Um, and they they've basically said yes, we are going to do more raids. We are currently looking uh, at it. I'm going to say this because it's wildly going to change. I know people are going to hate on me when we don't actually do this, but we are thinking once a year looking at the participation so how many people are raiding and interesting in this content and then maybe every 12 to 14 months do a raid so that the players can continue to experience content in that manner now the interesting thing about that is you know they're looking at a new raid every year and a bit um, so that implies we're again looking multiple years into the future to to have multiple raids what format these raids could be is up for you know interpretation it could just be like single boss lair type raids rather than multi-boss type raids um, but we did just have a multi-boss uh, raid so you know it's not exactly off the cards um, but again it, it seems like you know they have intentions to to have a, a long-term plan and continue development on that regards um, the other thing then um, is another interview they've done and this one's a bit later in the year so this is now the middle of October 2016 um, and again they're, they're kind of like hinting back at the expansion pack and they were talking about like the housing update because there's been a massive thread on the uh, the lottery forums for for many years now talking about you know what changes do they what yeah you know, what would be good for kinship changes you know add new features etc because Lotro's kinship system um, the, the guild system if you prefer that term from other games if you're more familiar with that um, it's, it's kind of like quite dated it's quite restrictive you know you can't have like custom ranks or you know largely customized permissions like you can in many other MMOs and all these other bits and pieces so someone kind of like came up with like a uh, 
this is someone who's not affiliated with Turbine, it's like just a player, but they, they came up with this like elaborate plan prototype um, for, for ways that you could improve the kinship system within Locho and they even did like some like mock-up screenshots and stuff and it was like really well received by the community and, and people have always been asking Turbine, can you do something like this or can we get a, a kinship revamp to, to incorporate some of these kind of like cool ideas and any other ideas you've got. Um, and this is something that's kind of like been on the cards for a while and they've said, you know, we'd love to do that. We don't quite have the time at the minute. So to go back to the idea of the expansion, they've said, um, you know, is, is this something you, you would put in an expansion? And they've said, yeah, well, you know, it's, it's a nice feature. We'd, we'd like to do an expansion. Um, but at the same time, it's not something that would necessarily be tied to the expansion because it would probably be released at the same time as the expansion, but you wouldn't need the expansion to benefit from it. So, you know, you've just uh, overhaul kinships at the same time. Um, as with many features that come out of MMOs that are not necessarily tied to owning the expansion yourself, but things that just get updated along the way. So again, you know, they, they still have the plans to do this expansion and certainly um, new um, major game updates to kind of change the, the status quo and improve the game, etc. Um, so they certainly have a lot of plans going forward to do that. So the other thing they've done then, um, in addition to this, is is they've done um, like a, a frequently asked questions article, just sort of combining a lot of the questions people are asking about this transition to Standing Stone Games. Bearing in mind, Standing Stone Games are going to have the same people working on it, the same plans for the future. They're going to be working certainly at least until the end of 2018, possibly beyond that. Maybe this is going to reinvigorate their um, plans of the future maybe if they are genuinely independent and no longer affiliated with Warner Brothers maybe they have less shackles on what they can and cannot do um, maybe they can actually you know, go off and, and do all these good ideas because certainly a lot of the developers over the years have, have come up with like good ideas but it's a case of I'd like to do this but I don't have time to do this or I feel really strongly about this but I'm having to do it as you know in my own time for free but I want to do that because I believe in the game and believe in this this change I'm making etc there's been lots of cases of that in the past um, and unfortunately many of the, the fantastic devs that Lotro has had over, over the years over the last 10 years now it's been um, are no longer with Turbine or Standing Stone Games now because they have been made redundant or moved on elsewhere of their own choice um, but yeah so let's have a look at these, these frequently asked questions then so What's happening? Lotro and DDO have been acquired by Standing Stone Games, a newly formed independent game studio made up of the same groups that have been working on Lotro and DDO for years. We remain committed to both games and are thrilled to be able to take these games in exciting directions for a long time to come. Standing Stone Games will operate as an independent studio, so again implies Warner Brothers is not involved, uh, with global publishing support from Daybreak Games. What does this mean? It's business as usual for both Lotro and DDO's operations and development. Both games will continue along their respective development paths and bring you the content you enjoy. So basically that's just reiterating that they are continuing with the same long-term plans that they'd set up previously and were discussed in those interviews we just looked at. So what is happening to Turbine? Turbine will no longer be involved in the development of Lotro and DDO. They will continue on the development of their products. So at this point, um, publicly, I think the only the only turbine properties that were in a, actual effect were Lotro, DDO, and Ashron's Call, because Infinite Crisis um, has has been you know shut down. So those are the only three things that are running. But as I said previously, Turbine are looking to refocus in like the mobile apps um, industry. Um, Ashron's Call shuts down at the end of, of January this month. Um, and that will be gone and the other two games have now gone to Standing Stone Games so they're going to continue working on whatever they're working but Turbine as an entity will continue to exist um, and belong to Warner Brothers so what about my account? your account login information remains the same you will keep all purchases including Turbine points though presumably these are going to be renamed at some point um, VIP subscription time lifetime memberships for Lotro and any things you've picked up through the in-game store. So basically, anything you own currently, you're still going to have. You're not going to lose anything. 
there's not going to be any problems with like account transfers or migrations or anything like that so you just log in it's business as usual are you planning to make any changes to the cost of VIP we are always looking for additional ways to offer the best value to our VIP players the cost and value of the VIP program remains unchanged although it's possible we may offer additional benefits or tiers of subscription in the future so this is interesting so multiple tiers of subscription what could this mean what what kind of crazy plans are they uh, planning to have you know are we gonna have kind of like at the moment where we've got three players who are literally just like brand new accounts you've got premium players who are players who have subbed or spent money real money on the game previously so they kind of get some extra benefits and some extra priority um, over some some of the free players and then you've got the VIP players who play the monthly subs are they saying that they might have like a cheaper monthly sub which kind of has half those benefits or something who knows but it's kind of interesting and reassuring that they're kind of actually willing to think about this because it implies that you know they they are really heavily invested into developing the game more and thinking about ways they can improve this and not only that but but obviously thinking about their own finances as well because you know okay we don't want them just going for a mad cash grab or anything like that but you know if they are financially um stable as a company and Lotro and DDO as well are financially stable as games and generating money um, and are profitable for the company they're going to continue putting money into the games it's you know simple logistics really you know while the if the game is prof profitable they're going to divert resources to it the more profitable the game is the more resources they can throw at the game you know they can maybe hire some new staff to work on the game new developers etc so it's in everyone's best interest that the game does well and is financially viable um, and if that helps that then yeah sure I'm all for it um, I'm sure it's not going to turn into like a cash grab there's certainly some other games that are a bit more cash grabby with their their store um, and their, their free to play models but uh, I'll show it's pretty reasonable on that front so what's happening to turbine points your point total remains intact. The name of your points will change from turbine points to DDO or Lotto points, so they're just going to have a generic name. But the value of these points will not change. So a thousand turbine points is a thousand Lotto points. They're not changing the price of anything in the store. Everything is going to be business as usual there. So what about game cards like turbine point cards and subscription time cards? You will still be able to redeem cards that you've purchased. So presumably they're going to stop, um, not necessarily stop selling cards entirely, but certainly like turbine branded cards will stop. They might have some new cards branded with Standing Stone Games, but any any existing game time cards, if you pay with game time cards, they should still be valid. What about my lifetime membership? Your lifetime membership will continue to be honoured, and no changes to it will be made. So again, you're still good until the day they decide to switch off the servers which hopefully will be many years to come. Uh, will this require any downtime or impact our ability to log in? Bearing in mind, this has already happened. Uh, we encourage players to keep an eye on our social media feeds and forums, as there may be some periods of downtime while we do technical and other work in the coming weeks. Our plan is, of course, to minimise the amount of downtime to the least possible. So again, there's no there's no massive infrastructure changes to, to how the game is going to run. They're not moving the servers to a different data center or across you know international borders as was the case when uh, Europe migrated back to America so there's no problems there you're just going to still have the, the usual maintenance periods maybe they'll change the, the maintenance days or something um, but you know there's, there's no major changes there um, so will the servers be changing we will continue to operate out of our existing data center so again no downtime and there are no plans to change the servers in any way so this is something to underline as well because there was some talk um, as recently as like the, the first half of this year where they were saying we're thinking about moving the European servers back to Europe back to Amsterdam um, and then eventually they decided you know no after the server merges happened you know we're not going to migrate the servers back to Europe they're staying in Boston so this is just reiterating the fact that you know 
this is not going to happen. There's no plans to change the service in, in any way, including migrating the service back to Europe. That's not happening. It's not planned. So, you know, forget about it, basically. What does this mean for the licensing of the Dungeons and & Dragons and Lord of the Rings IPs? So this is the big one, you know. How long are you licensed to continue running these games from, you know, the companies that own the rights to Lord of the Rings properties, Dungeons and Dragons properties? Um, or without these these licenses, they're not allowed to run the game, basically, no matter how much they want to. So we've updated our licensing agreements without issue and will continue that relationship. So that's quite an interesting one. So uh, for those of you that don't know, that the companies that that have the uh, the rights to Lord of the Rings themed merchandise um, uh, and the various properties, they they kind of like qu can be quite strict about letting people have rights to those, or they they want approval of various things they do. So so certainly in the past, when the the dev teams in Lotter have said, you know, we wanna we wanna do this, you know, introduce these peoples or you know like these kind of like creatures or whatever to the world and that is this okay and, you know they, they would get told you know no or yes or whatever you know there, there was like certainly some level of approval um, that they couldn't do anything like ridiculously stupid um, but it's interesting that that this is not a problem obviously bear in mind they're transitioning to be a new company and it's interesting that the the, the holders of these IPs are willing to work with this new company probably because it is the same staff the same people they've they've been dealing with up until now just underneath a different company brand um but you know both both of those games have now got updated licensing agreements the interesting thing obviously is they have not said how far in the future they've extended those license agreements but presumably there's no problem with renewing it because they said you know it's it is without issue they had no problems doing it it's not like they were uh, forced to to meet certain criteria to, to facilitate this so it looks good uh, how do we contact customer service after the transition for the time being still support .turbine.com. Uh, one of the ones that gets getting asked quite a lot as well does this mean the games are shutting down no exclamation mark on the contrary we are extremely excited by this transition into an independent studio so again, maybe they, they could be extremely excited because they no longer have the shackles of Turbine Senior Management, certainly Warner Brothers interfering with their design ideas because that's... Ever since Warner Brothers took over ownership of, of, of Turbine, I don't want to say the game's been on the, on the decline, but you can certainly feel a degree of interference, shall we say, from, from uh, parent company executives. Um... So we're extremely excited by this transition into an independent studio and we can't wait to work on the game long into the future. So again, they, they have a multi-year plan, they, they are committed to it, they want to deliver, they want to make the game as best as it can be for both Lotra and DDO. Uh, are the websites changing? What about Facebook, Twitter and other social media sites? We may do some work on DDO.com and Lotro.com in the future, but the websites and social media URLs will stay the same. We will be switching out some corporate logos and such in the coming weeks, of course, but if you subscribe to us on YouTube or like us on Facebook, for example, there's nothing you need to do. So basically, you know, they're just going to have to update the websites, but, you know, there's not going to be new websites or anything like that. The forums are still going to be operating as expected. Um, and the last question they've got here is, how does this impact Daybreak Games? So Daybreak Game Company's role as publisher for Lotro and DDO should have no impact on any existing Daybreak Games, which it shouldn't do anyway. So, you know, they're, they are just going to be a publisher role. They're not going to be uh, involved in the day-to-day the -day development or, or running of uh, Standing Stone games or the design of uh, Lotro or DDO in the future. So so that's all the information we've got at the minute, which is still pretty limited. Um, but as I say, it's still going to be the same people working on the game. Um, so you've still got the same executive producer, uh, Sevelin, uh, same community managers, etc., etc. Um, so it's not going to there shouldn't certainly be any hiccup periods as they like transition to this new company it's just a case of everyone goes back to work in the new year but as part of this new company and they, they pick up where they left off before Christmas basically um, so it'll be interesting to see how this goes forwards but 
it certainly seems positive, shall we say? I'm I'm probably leaning towards the more positive um, side of the spectrum since the transition because I think that the, the swing vote for me is the fact that once they're decoupled from Warner Brothers um, and this kind of like interference from from upper level executives, I think they they could start to blossom again and potentially do some some new interesting things. Um, without being forced to, to adhere to certain things or doing certain things within certain time frames etc so I'm cautiously optimistic um, certainly there's there's a few years left in the game at the very least that certainly through to the end of 2018 um, hopefully beyond that as well and hopefully this will kick start a bit of um, a reinvigoration of the game going forwards hopefully we'll see some more raids some more interesting content and that going forwards um, because there's still plenty of places to go in Middle Earth. I mean, even once we've destroyed the ring, you know, we haven't been south to Harrod or eastwards. There's lots of lands in the north that we haven't been to, like Northern Mirkwood. Um, so there's loads of, you know, iconic places within Middle Earth that we could go visit still. Um, so hopefully you guys have found this interesting and informative. Uh, again, I will put all the links to all the articles I've referenced in this video in the description below, so you guys can check them out. Um, I especially recommend as well that you do go read uh, the interviews that, that Daddy did with the Lotro team because that is uh, some fantastic interviews. There's a, a lot of detail in those, um, which could uh, you know have some impact on the game's development in in 2017 and beyond. Um, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this and stay tuned for more Lotro videos in the new year. Until then, see you guys later.